Hi, Kim Munson here. I'm one of the Americhicks with my colleague Molly Vogt. And we are honored to be talking to Mary Kissel, who is, is on the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal. Mary, how are you doing? How are you today? It's my first time in Steamboat Springs, so I'm uh, I'm doing great. It's beautiful out here. It was cold this morning. There was a negative before the number than when I got in the car. Yeah, and, and, and I'm a Floridian, so for me this is especially <laughs> this is especially terrible. It's really cold. So just a few questions. We appreciate you taking the time with us, but being on the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal is a pretty big deal. As a woman, what would you say to other women uh, regarding um, getting into this or you know, reaching this pinnacle of your profession? Right. Well, I don't define myself by my gender, <laughs> and uh, journalism is one of those rare professions that has always really been based on merit. You can either write uh, or you can't write. You can either think critically or you can't. And actually there have been many, many predecessors of mine on the Wall Street Journal editorial page who were women. Um, I was based in Hong Kong, for instance. I ran our editorial page out there. Uh, and for, by my count, uh, three out of the five prior were women. It's a little known fact, but uh, the editorial page stands for free markets and free people. and competition and it's the same in our hiring practices. Uh, if you can write and argue and if you believe in our principles then uh, you get a job. I think I may know the answer to this question, but do you think that individuals in America should make their decision about who would be president based on their body parts? <laughs> <laughs> no. I had a feeling you were going to say that. <laughs> um, what, what is the number one issue that is on your radar today? I think uh, that the global disorder is the biggest issue on my radar today, simply because we face so many threats to our national security. Look at what just happened in San Bernardino. Look at the bureaucratic breakdown that allowed Tashveen Malik to enter the United States. Look at how our multicultural uh, training prevented her neighbor from alerting the authorities when he noticed that something was wrong. Uh, look at the radical Islamic jihadist ideology that drove these two residents of the United States, uh, who have been, by any account, very successful here, treated very well by the country, uh, living a very middle class, decent life. Uh, how could they have walked in to their uh, office building and, and slaughtered people? Uh, and the FBI director has told us that we have ISIS investigations going on in all 50 states. Uh, this is the issue of the election. The secondary issue is, of course, also the economy. We've had the weakest recovery since the Great Depression. 2% growth is not normal. This idea that we have something called secular stagnation, this is what the left likes to say about our 2% growth rate, is not normal. It's the result of policies. It's the result of strangling business through higher taxes, through an inordinate amount of regulation, uh, by socializing health care through Obamacare, which has created an enormous amount of cost, not just to businesses that are providing the health care, but also to individuals who were kicked off of their coverage, and to people who are now, like me, paying higher deductibles uh, and, and higher uh, doctor's visit costs. They also have fewer doctors to see. The networks are getting smaller. Uh, and that's why I think you see so many people on the right and the left, Occupy Wall Street on the left, the Tea Party on the right, they've come to the realization that this is wrong, that government has gotten too big, uh, and that something needs to change. So, sorry, to answer your question, I put the global disorder first, I put the economy second, but of course they're interlinked because you can't have a strong defense without a strong economy here at home. Which brings the third question. It's been a very tumultuous beginning to 2016 for the stock market. What's your thoughts about that? Well, you have to ask what created the run-up in the stock market in the first place. Was it based on real economic growth and growth forecasts and profit forecasts? Or was it based on the expectation that the Federal Reserve was going to continue easy money policies uh, into the near or medium term. And I would argue that the Federal Reserve, they lowered rates in 2009. There was never an argument to keep rates near zero once we started to recover. We do not exist in the same conditions today, nor did we exist two or three years ago in the same conditions that we had 
in the wake of the financial crisis. So what did you see? You saw a lot of companies doing financial engineering, buying back stock, refinancing their debt at very cheap levels, uh, paying, uh, uh, effectively taking advantage of those out of China and saying, you know what? Every indicator is pointing down. Commodity prices are pointing down. Oil is down, not just because of oversupply, but because of lack of demand. Europe is on its knees. Japan still can't get its act together after more than 20 years of Obama-like policies. So you know, maybe what we've priced into the stock market isn't based on reality. Maybe it's based on this fictional idea that the Fed is going to come in and save the day. And I think that's wrong. We've been arguing that that's been wrong on the editorial page uh, for several years now. And I think, unfortunately, uh, it's, a, it's a correction that needed to happen.